Welcome, everyone, to Family Talk. It's a ministry of the James Dobson Family Institute, supported by listeners just like you. I'm Dr. James Dobson, and I'm thrilled that you've joined us. The following program is intended for mature audiences. Listener discretion is advised. Well, welcome to Family Talk. I'm Roger Marsh. You know, as we are getting ready for election 2024, so many people are looking at what the key issues are in the culture around us. And one of the biggest ones is the sanctity of human life. On the left, you have people who are saying that the issue of abortion means if we outlaw abortion, that's the end of democracy. Now, you and I both know that's not true. But for those of us on the pro-life side of the equation, we understand that anytime an abortion law is codified into a state constitution, it makes it virtually impossible to remove. Well, today on Family Talk, we're going to continue with a powerful presentation from Dr. William Lyle, focusing on standing strong for the sanctity of life in the public square. Of course, Dr. William Lyle is known as the pro-life doc. He has delivered over 4,000 healthy babies during his career, is a practicing board-certified obstetrician and gynecologist in the state of Florida, in the Florida panhandle, is licensed to deliver babies in Florida and Alabama, and probably one of the most controversial steps he's ever taken in his ministry was to purchase the then largest abortion clinic in the state of Florida back in 1999, close it down, and reopen it as a pro-life pregnancy resource center. The Pro-Life Doc website, prolifedoc.org, is where you'll find more information about Dr. William Lyle. And we have a link for his website at our website, drjamesdobson.org forward slash family talk. And now let's get into part two of a powerful presentation from Dr. William Lyle on Standing Strong for Life on today's edition of Dr. James Dobson's Family Talk. The 14th Amendment says, nor shall any state deprive any person of life, liberty, or property without due process. Throughout history, if you want to persecute one group, the Jews, the German Supreme Court, the Reichert says the Jews are not persons within the legal sense. Women's right to vote, Native Americans, African Americans. When you want to have power over any group, deny them a personhood. Well, guess what? Even the medical community says that all patients are persons. And if we are doing blood transfusions, heart surgery, spina bifida surgery, they are a patient and therefore they are a person that deserves our protection. We can do not just imaging, we can do DNA tests of the babies on the inside. You know that seven weeks after conception, a routine test, that I can do a blood test on the mom, just getting a little bit of blood from her arm, and I can not only tell you with more than 99% accuracy, seven weeks after conception, whether this is going to be a boy or a girl, but I can do genetic studies on these babies on the inside. Why? Because these little fragments of DNA go over into the mom's blood, and then we can separate out the baby's fragments from the mom's fragments. 95% of these fragments are from the mom, 5% are from the baby, and we can separate out that 5% and we can do genetic studies. Genetic stu- this is my 23 and me, where you can see where my history is. This is the exact type of history that we can get from these babies seven weeks after conception, just with a blood test from the mom. But here's another key, two hours after a baby is even born or a baby is aborted, you can't do this test because little baby Elvis giving this fragments of DNA has left the building. This baby is no longer there. And two hours afterwards, once this baby is not in the womb anymore, we no longer have that baby's DNA, which is unique and separate from the mom. So when this young girl with her smiling, pleasant face says, it's my body, it's my choice, unless it's a COVID vaccination, then that rule does not apply. All right. But she says, it's my body, it's my choice. Well, Half the time, first of all, it, that little body on the inside is going to be a boy's body. And that is not going to be part of your body. We have XX chromosomes on mom. We have XY chromosomes on the baby. Babies can have different blood type. They are a perfect mix between dad's genetics and mom's genetics. Mom is an amazing life support system, but this is not part of her body there on the inside. 
I don't know about Colorado, but we have a problem with narcotics in Florida. Y'all have a problem here? It's a problem nationwide. In fact, in 2020, we had 93,000 people that died of narcotic overdoses here just in our country. And they've changed all the rules as far as prescribing. I can't prescribe a narcotic unless I look up the patient, find out all the physicians that have given them, and I even have to prescribe Narcan if they have a certain score. And that Narcan is an antidote for a, nar a narcotic overdose. 92,000 babies. It'll break your heart. But why did I pick a heart here? Because how long does it take in the United States for us to lose 92,000 babies in the womb? In 2020, it was 45 days, Valentine's Day. Guys, when you are in the 7-Eleven getting your wife a Valentine's Day card because you forgot about it, I want you to think about we have already hit that point of 92,000 babies that have been killed in the womb, created in the image of God at the moment of conception, but we've already equaled the number of narcotic overdose deaths when it comes to abortions in 45 days. So we save patients' lives with Narcan, which is like a sleeping beauty medication. They are out, they are not breathing. We give them Narcan and boom, they just sit up. The abortion pill is another tragedy that is happening here in the United States. The abortion pill is now available mail order and it's available via telemedicine because of all the things that have happened with COVID. How does it work? It's called RU46. Anybody work in a restaurant? Anybody? All right, if the chef says 86 the meatloaf, what does that mean? Kill the meatloaf. There's no more meatloaf. Look at this medication. R U 4 86 ing this life on the inside of the womb. You know, how does it work? It blocks a very important hormone called progesterone. When is it used? And I want you to understand the difference between the morning after pill, which is evil in its own way. The morning after pill is 72 hours after intercourse. The abortion pill is 70 days, 10 weeks. You saw my daughter jumping and sliding at 12 weeks. This is 98% effective in killing the baby in the womb up to 70 days. It works by blocking a hormone called progesterone. Everything in the woman's body that is good for a pregnancy is managed by this coach this uh, conductor of pregnancy called progesterone. In fact, we get this name from, it is a progestational steroid hormone. It's like, okay, attention body. We have a new full-time job. We are gonna support this pregnancy. We're gonna send more nutrition. We're gonna you know, relax the uterus to allow for growth. We're gonna close the cervix and we're gonna support this pregnancy. This is our new full-time job. The abortion pill blocks this hormone called progesterone. Before COVID, we said that 39% of all abortions were performed with the abortion pill. Now with COVID, it's now over 50% of all the abortions are now performed with the abortion pill. In fact, a federal judge in Maryland said it was an undue burden for a woman to go into an office to get an ultrasound. And that's why it is now available via telemedicine and even mail order to your home. And that is an absolute tragedy here in the United States. In fact, you see these ads, a safe at-home abortion is available. Yeah bleeding, cramping, and pain. Typically, the young girl is going to be upstairs in her bathroom by herself. She might be eight, nine, ten weeks along. She got mail order abortion pills. When I induce a patient at term, I give her 25 micrograms of a medication to give her contractions. With the abortion pill regimen, it is 800 micrograms of the same medication. So you'll talk about intense pain, cramping, bleeding, and it's not just that it gets d d absorbed. You are passing everything that you saw on the ultrasound of that baby on the inside. It is absolutely horrible, but this is not about health care, and I'll tell you why. The number one killer of women in the United States who are pregnant in the first trimester is still a ruptured ectopic pregnancy. If a woman does not have an ultrasound, you don't know where that pregnancy is. You just know that there is an, a pregnancy. It's the ultrasound that says where. So a young girl is given the abortion pill, maybe mail order, and she's told, you're going to have bleeding, cramping, and pain as opposed to if she has an ectopic tubal pregnancy, she's also gonna have bleeding, cramping, and pain. How is she supposed to know the difference between one bleeding, cramping, and pain and the other? Women will be hurt and women will die because they think they're having an abortion. Meanwhile, they're suffering the effects of a ectopic tubal pregnancy. So is there an antidote for the abortion pill? Sure. Just like with a narcotic overdose, we give them Narcan. If somebody takes the abortion pill and changes their mind, their progesterone levels were going up. They take the abortion pill and the progesterone levels go down. When we can reverse it, we just give them the exact same progesterone that their body produces anyway. 
And it's not just this is the antidote for the abortion pill. This is used in regular routine obstetrics all the time. My wife and I have two perfect kids, but we had four miscarriages. If I have a patient who's had, she got pregnant, she had a miscarriage, got pregnant, have a miscarriage, she might not have enough progesterone. It's called a luteal phase defect. So what is the standard of care? We give her progesterone. It is bioidentical. It's made from yams and soybeans, and you can't tell the difference between the chemical that is made in the woman's body and this medication. We use it for recurrent miscarriage. All of my twins and triplets go on Prometrium. It prevents preterm labor. So it's not just the abortion pill antidote. It's something that we use in routine obstetrics all the time. And if we know in enough time, we can actually reverse the effect safely for the mom and safely for the baby with the antidote medication. In fact, we we have a website, abortionpillreversal.com. We have a toll-free number. We have nurses that manage that, get all the information. We've trained over 500 doctors on these protocols. I spent a weekend in Dublin, Ireland, training 60 docs over there. But you know what? Within the first month, we had three successful reversals, and it's socialized medicine, National Health Service, and they told all the obstetricians, you do that again, you reverse the effect of the abortion pill, you will lose your license. There is incredible intimidation, and it's happening here in the United States as well. So what happens? I'm going to give you a quick story. I had a patient who lived in Destin, Florida. She was nine weeks pregnant, and her boyfriend, when she said, hey, guess what, I'm pregnant, her boyfriend said, you better do something about that or I'm, I'm gonna leave you. Well, she should have said, bye, Felicia, and just left the loser, but she called the abortion clinic up in Tallahassee. They said, we can't get you in for two weeks. She goes, I only have one more week to take the abortion pill. They said, well, try Jacksonville, Florida. She drove five hours from Destin, Florida to Jacksonville, Florida. She went to Jacksonville, Florida. She took the abortion pill. She swiped her credit card. She signed the consent. She got back in her car and she hops on I-10. So she's hopping on I-10. She's heading west back towards Destin, Florida. And somebody was whispered to by the Holy Spirit, put up a billboard. The billboard said heartbeat at 18 days. It spoke to her. Another group was spoken to by the Holy Spirit. That group put up another billboard on the other side of the road, and it said, your mom chose life, you should too. She saw those two billboards, and she was just convicted. She took the next rest area, and she looked up abortion pill antidote. She didn't know what else to look up. Took her to our website, spoke with a nurse, nurse cook calls me. I speak with the patient. I said, you live in Destin, right? I said, is this your pharmacy number? She goes, yes. We gave her all the risks, benefits, indications, alternatives. You keep driving. I'm going to call this in. Spoke, called the pharmacy. And I spoke with the pharmacist. Hey, it's Dr. Lyle. I need to call in Prometrium, 200 milligrams, yada, yada, yada. And there's a pause. And the pharmacist says, Dr. Lyle, are you trying to reverse an abortion pill? taught to be bold. I said, yes, ma'am, I am. And she goes, oh my gosh. She goes, I'm so excited. She goes, I've read about this, but I've never been involved with this. I said, well, she doesn't have any money. I said, I want to put this on my credit card. She goes, I can't take your credit card. I said, it's Amex. It's good. you know." And she goes, no, she goes, I'm so excited about this. She goes, I'm going to take good care of her and I'm going to pay for this medication. <laughs> Called the patient later that night. And I said, hey, did you get to the pharmacy? She goes, yeah, that's a weird pharmacy. Uh, I said, what are you talking about? And she said, well, I went to the pharmacy, gave her my name. She said, she said, oh my gosh, you're here. She left that area with all the privacy. She came around. She said, she gave me a big hug, gave me the medication, said, I'm going to be praying for you. I paid for your medication. <laughs> How much did it cost? $109. My wife and I, whenever we do a reversal, we pay for the medication because they might not have insurance. They might have spent all the money on the abortion pills that we pick it up. Look at this image. You have a baby who is, has a 98% chance of walking to death. We invest and buy back as a group united together in kingdom service, and we buy back that life for $109. Compare that to all of us, where 100% of us were walking to death in eternal separation from God, yet then we are bought back. And what's the spiritual word for that? We are redeemed. We're bought back, not with $109 worth of Prometrium. We're bought back with the blood of Christ. When you look at the studies, they will show in the surveys that in the evangelical church, 18% of all the members have personally been involved with an abortion. In the Catholic church, it's 24%. If we are not hearing the truth of forgiveness coming from our pulpits on Sundays, then how do we expect the message of forgiveness and the gospel to reach these people? You have healing 
Healing only comes with true forgiveness, and true forgiveness only comes through the blood of Christ. So yes, we're redeeming these babies, but it's the message of the gospel that is redeeming these moms as well. And it's the best example. I'll have people come up and say, you know what? I knew redeemed was good. Redeemed how I love to proclaim it. But she goes, now I understand what it means to be bought back. Where am I? San Francisco, why is the bridge on the left? Because everything in California is on the left these days. But there was a, you know, it unfortunately has become the main focal point for a lot of suicides. 18 people we know of have jumped off the Golden Gate Bridge. They've now spent $200 million on a net support system to try to catch some of these people. But we know of 1,800 people that have jumped off, fallen 225 feet to the ground. But you know what? Everybody doesn't die. In fact, a psychologist realized that there were 29 cases of people who jumped off that bridge and survived. They got fished out by a fisherman or by the Coast Guard. So she found these 29 people, and she said, I gotta find out what was going through your mind. And they all said the same thing. I walked out onto the bridge, nobody loves me, nobody cares for me, nobody's here to help me, and the world would be better without me in it. And they jumped off the bridge, and then her, she's like, and then went through your mind. She goes, as, and 29 of 29 said, as soon as I saw the bridge above me, and I realized I was falling. I cried out to God and said, I don't want to die. And by some miracle, God saved their life. Did they have regrets from jumping off the bridge? Sure. Do people have these same regrets when they walk into the abortion clinic saying, nobody loves me, nobody cares for me, nobody's going to help me out. My, this baby would be better off not to be born. And then they take the abortion pill. But then do they walk out and have regrets yeah, they sure do. I mean, we have now documented over 2,500 successful abortion re pill reversals that our group has already been involved with personally. We've trained 500 docs and we've traveled around the world. It's the message of redemption. It's the message of buying back. So is it a choice? I mean, you had your choice, tea or coffee. You had your dessert choices last night. You know, so is it a choice or are we really engaged in a spiritual battle? And again, this is an attack against that image of God. You hate God, you're going to attack the image of God. Just like if you hate the United States, you're going to burn the flag because it represents the image of the United States. Spiritual battle, all about the image of God. So what does scripture say? Well, in Psalm 139, it says, the psalmist is looking up to God, and he's saying, you know what? I don't know about fetal development and conception and cell differentiation, but you form my inmost being. You knit me in my mother's womb. I praise you so wonderfully. You made me. Jeremiah 1.5, God saying, Jeremiah, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you, and before you came out, I sanctified you. I set you apart to be a prophet unto the nations. God knows who we are, and he has a relationship with us while we are still in the womb, because we are created in his image, not when we're born, but at that moment of conception. But look at this, Romans 5.8, but God demonstrates his own love for us in this, while we were still sinners, Jesus died for us. So God loved us all enough that he sent his son, he lived a perfect life, he gave his life for us on the cross of Calvary, was buried, not just merely dead, but really most sincerely dead for three days, and then he conquered death and he rose again, and if we put our trust and faith in that, we can spend eternity with God. That's Romans 5.8. That's amazing love. But look back in Psalm, Psalm 51.5. Surely I was sinful from birth. We're sinners at the moment of birth, but look what the psalmist says. I was sinful from the time my mother conceived me. The conception was not the act of sin. It's that we're not just born with a sin nature. We are conceived with a sin nature. So when God sent his son and did all that out of amazing love for us, it wasn't just for those who had already been born. It was from those who had already been created in the image of God at that moment of conception. So if God loves the preborn that much, should we dedicate our lives to protect the lives of these preborn. if God would do that for him? Absolutely. This is me on Pensacola Beach. Pretty, pretty. I love it. What's behind me? There is a fence. My wife and I went over on a weekend because they had started laying tur sea turtle nests. And when that nest behind me, when a sea turtle lays its eggs, they put a fence around it. Then they put a second fence. Then they put a third fence around. And once they do that, then they put up these signs. And these signs say, do not disturb Preborn sea turtles. In fact, there is Florida law and there is U.S. Endangered Species Act. You can be fined $100,000 and spend a year in jail just for disturbing preborn sea turtles at any gestational age. Somebody who's up in the front, what year is the Endangered Species Act passed? 
1973. So on one side of D.C. in 1973, you have Congress passing the, the Endangered Species Act saying, we're going to protect pre-born sea turtles. Meanwhile, on the other side of D.C., the U.S. Supreme Court is saying, but well, we're not going to give that same level of protection for pre-born babies in the womb. That makes no sense. So what is the answer? Yeah, we can walk around and I can talk about, you know, fetal development. We can show ultrasound how we treat the preborn as patients. And that is meritable. And that is one of the tools that we are giving you to protect and defend God's preborn. But what's the ultimate answer? The ultimate answer is the gospel. It is the gospel message that changes hearts. It is the gospel message that changes minds. It is the gospel message that changes behavior. If we want to win this battle and defend our nation, the shining light on the hill, we need to share the gospel. And that is what this ministry has done so well for over a half a century, faithful performing kingdom service to share the message of the gospel. There is a reason that we are here. Five years from now, I don't know if we're going to have the freedoms to gather together to perform kingdom service. I don't know if we're going to have free elections even five years from now. I am concerned about the fate of this nation. You know, my... I think about Judges. Remember in Judges 3, 4, 5, and 6, the children of Israel who were God's chosen people and the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord. And then what did he do? He delivered them into the hands of the enemies. He strengthened the enemies. They were in bondage for eight years. And then what happened? Well, are we committing evil in the sight of the Lord. 93 million babies created in the image of God, and we allowed that to occur here in the United States. We sure have. You know, when it comes to fighting, we've had that message and that theme of fighting. Would I fight for my wife? Absolutely. Would I fight for my kids? Absolutely. Would I fight for my grandkids that are hopefully coming along? I sure would, because we need to fight to preserve the republic that we enjoy for our kids and for our grandkids. We need to follow the example of Dr. Jim and Ms. Shirley. Why? Because they have been faithful servants. So what is our goal when it comes to our lives and performing kingdom service? Our goal is to hear the same words that Dr. Jim and Ms. Shirley are going to hear. And our goal should be when we die and we are going to be in the presence of God forever, we're going to think about our kingdom service for the 70, 80, 90 years we had on earth. In return, eternity in the presence of God. And what we want to hear are the same words that Dr. Jim and Ms. Shirley are going to be hearing. We want to hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant. God bless you and God bless the United States. Well, that was the conclusion of our special two-day program featuring a presentation given by our good friend, the pro-life doc himself, Dr. Bill Lyle. Dr. Lyle is a practicing OBGYN in the states of Florida as well as Alabama. And in addition to his practice, he also travels the country all throughout the year, sharing the truth about life in the womb and offering hope and encouragement to everyone he interacts with. Now, if you missed any part of today's or yesterday's broadcast, remember you can listen to them again both online by using the Family Talk app or by visiting drjamesdobson.org forward slash Family Talk. And while you're there, you can also learn more about Dr. Bill Lyle and his ministry. You can even request a CD copy of this two-day program if you'd like. Again, our ministry web address is drjamesdobson.org forward slash Family Talk. Now, as we come up on Election Day, which is two weeks from today, if you can believe it, Dr. Owen Strand, the senior director of the new Dobson Culture Center, has written a book to encourage us in the body of Christ and the nearly 51 million people who profess faith in Christ but choose not to vote each year. Dr. Strand has written a powerful ebook. It's a small, easy to read, easy to use book called Voting and the Church Why Christians Engage the Public Square. Now, we would love to get you a copy of this ebook right away. So go to drjamesdobson.org forward slash engage and we'll send you the ebook. Again, it's called Voting and the Church Why Christians Engage the Public Square. And you'll find that ebook at drjamesdobson.org forward slash the word engage. Now, as we consider the countdown to Decision 2024, early voting results are already starting to pile up. Many people, nearly half of all American voters, have cast their votes early. If you are still kind of sitting on the fence, if you're wondering whether or not you should cast your vote or whom you should vote for, we have a plethora of resources available to you at a very special website. It's drjamesdobson.org forward slash 
Countdown to Decision 2024. If you're in one of the 10 swing states in the United States, we have resources there for you, including voter guides. Also, a full-length audio interviews with Riley Gaines, Eric Metaxas, the author of the book Letter to the American Church, and more. We also have short reels. Some of them are two to three minutes in length. They're easy to digest, very powerful, compelling, and thought-provoking, and easy to share with your friends as well. Go to drjamesdobson.org forward slash countdown to decision 2024 and find the resources you're looking for. Again, that's drjamesdobson.org forward slash countdown dash two dash decision dash 2024. And thanks for remembering that Family Talk with Dr. James Dobson is a listener-supported broadcast outreach. We truly appreciate your ongoing prayers and faithful financial support. You can give a gift online through our secure website at drjamesdobson.org. You can also give a gift over the phone when you call 877-732-6825. And to send a gift through the mail, our ministry mailing address is Dr. James Dobson's Family Talk, Post Office Box 39,000, Colorado Springs, Colorado, the zip code 80949. Well, I'm Roger Marsh. Coming up tomorrow on Family Talk, a special conversation with Dr. Del Tackett discussing the reasons why so many Christians in the public square are literally being stirred up to become engaged citizens and to cast their vote. You won't want to miss this special edition of Dr. James Dobson's Family Talk, the voice you trust for the family you love. This has been a presentation of the Dr. James Dobson Family Institute.